Okay. Hey y'all, so I'm sorry that the Insecure Review is up so late. I was having a self-care Saturday and Sunday. I am refreshed and I am back. Um, it's nighttime right now on Monday, but hopefully this review will come to you at noon. Let's get into the episode. So this episode is the seventh of ten this season. It's called Low Key Trippin'. Three things about this episode. So first, this is a Molly-centered episode. Second, Issa is not in this episode at all. Um, I think this is the first time in the series where it's like no Issa at all. Um, third, this is an episode that was directed by Jay Ellis, who is Lawrence. Let's get into it. So the episode opens at the Ethiopian restaurant that we were left at last week. And now we're seeing it from Molly's perspective. And we find out that she actually did see Issa getting out the car coming in. Molly's like, oh Lord, here we go. So I'm guessing she was expecting Issa to come in and just pretend to look at her phone. And yeah, Issa turned around as we know and she's just like flabbergasted. And we start the episode off at Molly's place. Uh, Andrew is already there. Molly is just getting back from the Ethiopian restaurant. And she's telling him that I just saw Issa. And she was pissed that she turned around. But you know what? Like I said in the last video, that if I was Issa, I would have turned around too. Because I'm just not ready for it. Andrew asked her, well, are you going to call her? And she was like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. And now Molly, girl. Come on. She, so she still thinks she's not at fault for anything. And I don't know. I just feel like if there's no acknowledgement on her part, um, nothing's going to nothing's gonna resolve from this situation. So they are getting ready to go on their first vacation to Mexico. And later on, Molly gets a call from work saying she has to work the day of her flight. So we get to Molly at work and um, her assistant hands her some papers saying that she had to go to a meeting that I guess she wasn't aware of. It was on the assistant's fault that Molly didn't know about it. And she kind of like gave the assistant the business a little bit, just saying, you know, I don't pay you to make me look dumb. And some people think that, um, well, do you think Molly was going too hard on her? So from my personal assistant days, um, working with Amanda, I would say um, that's quite in line what she would probably tell me. So I really wasn't taken aback that how she was talking to her. I mean, it is a job and I get it. Maybe she could have did it um, more nicely, but whatever. Honestly, I think she's still carrying some anger from her fallout with Issa. So Molly gets there and her and Andrew are headed to their seats on the plane. Asian bait is just fine. Can I just take a moment to say that? I'm, I'm happy with uh, him and Molly as a couple. He's really good for Molly. Now, on the plane, we have our first cameo from Kim Fields. I'm glad she's still working. Um, she is playing a recent divorcee on a trip um, who's not that very self-aware. And yeah, she's um, telling a lot of her business to Molly and Andrew. And throughout this episode, it's kind of like a running gag, which is welcomed. So they're getting ready to take off and we learn that um, they will be meeting Andrew's brother there on the trip. And also, uh, they definitely plan on getting it on when they get there, but as you can see, they could not wait. And then Andrew, you know, puts his hand, you know, in Molly's lap. And he gets to going, you know, what? I, I'm trying not to say too much on here because I don't want to be demonetized. But yeah, y'all know what he was doing. He was doing a little bit of, of this in the seat. So they make it to Mexico. Hotel is beautiful. They meet up with Andrew's brother and his wife. Uh, the brother, uh, you can tell he's pretty aggressive. Um, he's nice at first. And um, his brother's wife is extremely gregarious and just keeps telling Molly how beautiful and gorgeous she is. Uh, she's nice. They're, they're nice so far. So they get to their hotel room and they're unpacking and like they were discussing on the plane, like they were ready to, you know, get it on or whatever. And they, be, and they both said that they were, you know, they brought something special 
for their intimate occasion. So first, Molly shows what she brought, which is just, you know, some sexy lingerie. And Andrew's like, oh. <laughs> and she's like, oh, well, what did you bring? So he pulls out, you know, toy after toy after toy. And yeah, like um, I wouldn't take Molly for the prude, but as far as toys in the bedroom, I mean, of course, like with your lover, like you got to explore to make things more spicy. I'm sure they passed the honeymoon phase, so you want to start trying different shit, and I get it, especially on the first vacation, something that I probably will not be on for a very long time. So anywho, um, after um, Andrew kind of teases Molly for being a prude, he asks her, you know, what do you like? And then they proceed to go on the balcony and, um, uh, well, yeah, I can say fuck right now. They proceed to fuck on the balcony. And you know what? I can never get enough of watching them too. So, yeah, don't judge me. I mean, I love their sex scenes. Like, they're both hot. So we're on the next day of their trip and they meet Andrew's brother and his wife for a hiking trip to the top. We also see Kim Fields again with the running gag of uh, her sharing too much. Now, I'll say that on a trip, I will not be doing any sort of exercising or um, exacerbating my energy. You know, um, I want to have fun. I want to relax. No running and exercising for me. No. Now, that zip line, it looked really fun. Um, I zip line when I was in Thailand. And I can tell you, yes, it is um, scary as hell. Mine wasn't that high, but it was over a water park. Just a little story of mine. So it looks like they're enjoying their vacation. We have a little montage of them having fun. I just have a gut feeling that something's gonna happen. You know, you just, it just can't be like a perfect vacation, of course. And this episode is going by really fast. Like, we're like maybe 12, 13 minutes in the episode now, and we only got 12 minutes left. So we're back at the hotel room, and we see that Andrew got three missed calls from Nathan. He calls Nathan on FaceTime, and Nathan just had to ask him how to get the garage door open. We do hear Issa's voice in the background, which means she is talking to Nathan, and they are seeing each other. Um, Molly, of course, hears this, and once he got off the phone with Nathan, she said, well, I'm not surprised, and judgment's on Molly. And then Andrew's like, what do you mean? And she's like, well... He showed his true colors by ghosting her, you know, and she's still dealing with him. And now, see, that's Andrew's roommate and his one of his good friends. So, of course, he's going to take up for Nathan a little bit. He was saying that Nathan was going through some mental problems. And, yeah, you just cut him some slack. And then Molly's like, oh, mental problems. I mean, does Zisa know? He was like, maybe. So during this uh, conversation, you do see that there's a glimmer of concern on Molly's part. A glimmer. I'm just paying attention to like, you know, the little key points in this story since we're not getting much story in this. But anywho, they go from talking about Issa to more sex. Molly puts on that lingerie getup and her body is banging. And we get a very, um steamy scene um, of Molly taking charge, and yeah, more sex. I'm not complaining. So the next scene, we're at the resort in the hotel, and it's Molly, Andrew, and um, Andrew brother's wife. During this scene, Molly gets a towel for Andrew's sister-in-law. She's waiting in line, and she gets up to the, um, the towel attendant. And the towel attendant doesn't let her uh, grab a towel. Like, she needs her hotel card. And Molly's like, well, I don't have it. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we can't. You know, I have to. And then she's like, well, the white people in front of me just uh, got a towel. And you didn't ask them for anything. Uh, so, yeah, this, this kind of escalates because Molly's just irritated. Like, what? And, of course, we see that, you know, this may be... Um, what we call a microaggression. And I gotta say, like, microaggressions can be um, just as annoying as flat out racism. And yeah, I mean, that could have been it. That's Molly's perspective. And I have no problem with her 
thinking that. Like, she has every right to. So Andrew's brother um, comes up to the situation because the towel attendant says, I'm going to get the manager, which is totally unnecessary. Molly then snatches the towel out of her hand and just goes about her way. We get back to the pool where Andrew and his sister-in-law is. Molly's clearly uh, bothered by the situation. Andrew asks her what's wrong. And then, you know, she tells him and said, you know, well, she tells him, but the brother chimes in and says, well, well, it was a towel attendant taking her job too far. And then Molly says, well, yeah, with a little bit of racist implications as well. Andrew's brother takes this time to challenge Molly on that and saying, well, do you really think it was a race thing? And at this point, I'm just like, oh, Lord, here we go. <laughs> I feel like he didn't really need to challenge her on that. And he's basically questioning Molly's experience. And I think what really set Molly off was, aren't you making your life harder by assuming and at this point, I would be like, uh, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So Molly's trying to explain her side and Andrew's brother is being very um, insensitive. He's being like, he's mansplaining it. And he's talking in a very privileged manner right now. Well, Molly says, well, you guys only claim color when, you know, it's to y'all's benefit. And throughout this entire time, Andrew's trying to like tell his brother to stop. Andrew's sister-in-law is trying to keep the peace. And then Molly, you know, offends both of them with that comment. And what you see right now is like basically a difference between the Asian American experience and Molly's experience. And I feel like this is the first time that she's really had to like deal with that and try to explain to people who might not get where she's coming from. Because I'm sure in interracial relationships, there's always going to be like a cultural thing that your partner just won't understand. So once Andrew brother says, well, you're picking and choosing who you're giving the benefit of the doubt to, Molly curses him out, says, fuck you, and leaves the pool. And honestly, I just knew something was going to happen. Um, I don't think the trip is ruined so far, but I knew there was going to be some type of hiccup on the trip. So later on, we had the night scene where they're sleeping on both sides of the bed separately. So the next day comes, Molly sleeps in, uh, Andrew comes back in with smoothies, and then they're just talking about the incident yesterday. Uh, Molly thinks that she ruined the trip, but Andrew said no. You know, I talked to my brother, he apologized. I'm not sure if he apologized to Molly, but he definitely was sorry to his brother. Um, they're not gonna hang out with them that day. They're just gonna go and do their own thing. And it seems like her and Andrew are back on track. I like him so far still, and I'm just wondering how the rest of the trip is gonna go so far. We cut to um, Molly strolling the beach by herself, and then um, she makes a call to her therapist from past episodes. So she leaves a message with her and she says, you know, I'm just having some problems letting go of things. And then we just have, you know, an introspective Molly staring into the uh, sunset. So the next scene we have that the trip is over. It's over already. They're back at the airport um, waiting for their luggage. We see Kim Fields one final time and it looks like she got back with her husband. Molly looks up and she sees Lawrence at the airport. They say hello to one another and Andrew is meeting Lawrence for the very first time. They exchange some awkward conversation and then the camera follows Lawrence. And then we hear Lawrence say, oh, hey, I've been thinking about you and let's get a drink. And that's where the episode ends. Um, we're left to like not knowing who was on the other side of that phone call. So my thoughts on this episode, this episode was okay. I really loved, you know, Kim Fields' little running gag. I thought it was a cute cameo. Second, I also think that this was kind of a character redemption for Molly. Like, you know, she wasn't, I don't know. I think she's just definitely um, let Andrew in. Cause I feel like, you know, I think he's here to stay, I think personally, unless something really big goes down. And then, you know, it's been fuck Molly for the past two weeks. So I didn't really mind a separate episode of Molly. So we can at least, you know, get back to the character, developing her. And it seems like she's still dealing with the fallout of the friendship with Issa, just how Issa was dealing with it in the past episode. Now, I will say that this episode was only 25 to 26 minutes. It felt like, you know, not that much happened. And that's just my thing. Like, I don't think that 
The episodes should be longer. I just think the pacing should be different. The way they story tell. Because honestly and truthfully, I think episodes six and seven with Issa and Molly by herself could have been one episode. Honestly. Because there wasn't that much that happened on Molly's vacation. I mean, I'm sure if you like take out the sex and the comedy, we were just left with little antidotes, you know? And then I feel like we didn't even get closure with uh, Molly and Andrew's family. Like I wanted to know like, well, did they hang out again? Did they get a chance to talk? Is everything good? We just get straight to Lawrence. Like we don't even finish that plot. And I'm starting to see that with these episodes, there's no B plot. It's just the A plot with Molly. Like there's no other plot going on. So if this is the only plot that we're following, like more should be happening. And also, you have these two extra episodes this season. What about the other characters in the show? Like, for instance, I'm going to use Sex and the City as an example. Sex and the City had 30 minutes for an episode. And they had four main characters. Now, I'm, I know that Issa and Molly are the main characters and sometimes Lawrence. But can they flesh out the other characters in the series? You know, like it's it's four seasons in and I feel like Tiffany's pretty one note. I feel like Kelly, like, we don't really know that much about her. Like, I don't know. I think we, they should give the supporting characters some more shine. And lastly, uh, next week's episode, uh, we see that Issa was the one on the other line of Lawrence's call. Or else they're making us believe it. Um, I can't wait to see what this uh, episode is because it looked like they're about to put Issa in a love triangle with Nathan and Lawrence. But yeah, that was the episode. I mean, I would give it a C. I mean, I always enjoy watching Insecure, but as far as just story and plot and interest, I think it was just an okay episode. Very filler, you know? Let me know in the comments. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you would like to donate to the channel, my cash app, PayPal, and Venmo at the bottom as well. So I will see you next week for the next episode.